the sun to the going down of the swing. Your name is to be praised from the rising of the sun. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you and welcome to our Divine Healing School. I am glad that you chose to tune in tonight, and I believe before it's over, you also will be glad that you chose to tune in. In just a moment, we're going to get into the Word and do some teaching on healing, and I believe that it's going to clarify some things for everyone. But just before we do that, we're going to pray and get into and then we'll get into the word of God. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for this opportunity to come before your throne. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to gather around the word 
and to be fed the word of God for the Holy Spirit to minister this word unto our spirits to teach us to open up the eyes of our understanding to bring light illumination inspiration revelation in the name of Jesus through the teaching now father I thank you for the Holy Ghost and I trust him to live big in me tonight to think through my mind speak through my lips and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer that I may speak as the oracles of God father I thank you for it I yield myself to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit and his anointing. And I trust him to minister through me according to your perfect will. I yield to the anointing that you have anointed me with. I yield to the teaching anointing. I yield to the healing anointing. I yield totally and completely and I say have your way minister to every person watching tonight in the name of Jesus and I'll give you praise for it in Jesus holy and majestic name amen praise God hallelujah we'll lift your Bibles and say with me this is my Bible it is the Word of God. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me, to change me, and to be glorified through my life. Therefore, I set myself in agreement with His Word by having a receptive heart and a readiness of mind to receive, and by being a doer of the Word I hear not a hearer only. I realize that obedience to God's word is essential in order to have God's best for my life. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to talk to you tonight. I want to share something with you that I received from the Lord several years ago. I'm going to read that to you. And then tonight we're going to get into our teaching on healing. Uh, that is, divine healing is a spiritual reality. You know, people quote the scriptures, with his stripes we are healed. But that is confusing for some people because they say, I know it says that, but I'm still in pain. I still have this condition. I still have this problem. And yet, the scripture says, with his stripes I am healed. And it's really confusing to people. But I believe this teaching about divine healing being a spiritual reality will help clear this confusion up. After all, God is not the author of confusion. Satan is. And the Holy Ghost wants you and I to understand his word. That is the word of God and understand what is being taught. But I'm going to get to that in just a minute. I want to read something to you. Now, I, um, I wrote this in March of 2019. But I want to read it to you. I want to read it to you as it was given to me and, and the whole thing. You see, I had been praying and asking God some questions because I'd been watching people claim to receive healing, claim that they're healed, and lose the battle. And I find that troubling. People are saying, I know I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. And still they don't win. And in some cases they even die. And if you would talk to them, 
uh, they would talk, they, they know all the stuff to say. They have all the right answers. But yet, they don't win. And that troubled me. And I went to the Lord about it. So let me read what, is, what I said, wrote. I have been praying recently about why people fail to receive healing, although they profess to believe. This morning, March the 14th, 2019, in a series of dreams, I had three dreams back to back on that day. And through those dreams, and in, in those dreams, the Lord spoke to me and taught me some things about in answer to my question. So uh, here's what I received. So I'll just give you the sum total of what I received that day. And here's what he said to me. Very often, people are able to quote healing scriptures verbatim and also make confessions of faith, as we call them, according to those scriptures. However, they do not know how to apply them in order to procure their healing. He went on to say, some can teach these scriptures to others by simply repeating what they've heard. They seem to understand what they're teaching, but they do not. They know how to articulate it, but they do not understand how to walk in it for themselves. Another pastor and myself several years ago was talking about this very thing. We were, we were um, traveling together and we got into a discussion about this. And we talked about how there are some people that know how to teach it, but they don't know how to walk in it. They can articulate it very well, but it's not working for them. And there's a reason why. And this is what the Lord was saying to me. He said, some can teach these scriptures to others by simply repeating what they've heard. They seem to understand what they're teaching, but they do not. They know how to articulate it, but they do not know how to walk in it for themselves. Then the Lord showed, said this to me. The problem is in the application of God's word. The scriptures must be applied. I'm going to say that again. The scriptures must be applied to the heart. And I'm not talking about that pump in your chest. I'm talking about your spirit man. The scriptures must be applied to the heart. Faith is of the heart. See, it's with the heart that man believes. Faith is of the heart. And there's a difference. Now listen carefully because this is very important. There's a difference between knowing the scriptures intellectually and knowing them on a heart level. I want to say that again. There's a difference between knowing the scriptures intellectually and knowing them on a heart level. Those who have difficulty receiving, that is receiving healing or receiving whatever they praying for, those that have difficulty receiving have only an intellectual knowledge of the word. I thought that was very powerful, so I want to say it again. Those who are quoting scriptures and all that, but they have having difficulty receiving, they only have an intellectual knowledge of the word. And uh, and they, they don't know them on a hard level. They know the scriptures, but they don't know it in their heart. Many, uh, sadly to say, do not know the difference between intellectual knowledge and heart knowledge. Intellectual knowledge gives you a sense of certainty and a general faith in God's willingness and ability to keep and perform his word. But when that certainty is challenged by contradictory circumstances, questions arise along with doubt and confusion. 
For example, what's wrong? Why is it not working? Etc. Now, when a person is in that kind of predicament and saying those things, and, and, and even if it's you, that is a sure sign that you know the thing intellectually. You know it mentally. What you have is mental assent or mental agreement. But that is quite different from knowing it on a heart level. Now, um, so as I said, intellectual knowledge gives you a sense of certainty and a general faith in God's willingness and ability to keep his word. But when, uh, when, but when certainty is challenged by contradictory circumstances, and let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you're praying for. It doesn't matter what you're believing for. There is going to be challenges. Challenges to your faith. You can't just talk the talk. One time I had um, something come against me. And I really had to stand on the word of God. But I didn't understand why that challenge came. And I went to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. Why? Why has this come against my body? And I stood in faith and I won, thank the Lord. But the Lord spoke to me. He said, if I never permit you to be challenged or your faith to be challenged how will you know that you're standing in faith on my word that was that's a, that was powerful it wasn't God trying me or God testing me but he permitted me to be challenged and that, that's going to happen what do you believe when the challenge comes I know what you say you believe when everything is smooth. It's, it reminds me of people, you know, talking about, I believe God. You know, my God supplies all my need. Yeah, that's that, according to his riches and glory. They say that because they get paid every week. And they're using their pay to take care of everything. What happened to that same person? if they lost their job. How many people that claim to believe God fall into a panic and do all kinds of silly um, things in an emergency to get them out of a jam? How many people you know owe all of these uh, you know, these people that you can go, um, title loans and all that. How many people, there are some people, they owe, they got more title loans out there than a little bit. Why? Because they panic, or when they get into a real need, they don't have a clue about how to stand on the Word of God. So they panic and they do whatever is easy to do. But they don't believe that God can bring them out of their situation. Now, I could go into a whole lot about that, but that's another discussion. That's another subject. Because some people find themselves in a mess because of their mismanagement of their money. Sometimes God gets the money to them, but they blow it. And they've not, they never learn from their mistakes. And so they keep repeating that. And then they get all upset and, and sometimes get upset with the Lord because he didn't, quote unquote, he didn't answer them. I prayed and I asked the Lord and he didn't, he didn't answer, he didn't give it to me. Really, is that what happened? Maybe he gave it to you early. He gave it to you early, but uh, before you even needed it. He put it in your hand but you wasn't smart enough to put it aside. 
you don't think. You know, I got this bill coming up. I know I know I switched over just now, but that's the Holy Ghost on me. They don't think, you know, I got this bill or this coming up, and so they put money aside. Instead, they, they think about what they want, what they want to buy, you know, what they want to get. I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to go here. And they, they're unwise. So it's not that God is not giving them anything, but they're just unwise with their money. Now let's get back to this healing. People claim to believe God. And, and often this, what they have is an intellectual knowledge. Now let me tell you the difference. Heart knowledge has a deep-seated peace associated with it. It is not moved by contradictory circumstances. It remains steadfast, fully persuaded that God's word must come to pass no matter how long it takes. When you have intellectual knowledge, then you're going by how things look. Same way with, with money and all, but also with, with your body. Intellectual knowledge responds to every little pain, everything that comes, every contradictory circumstance or, or symptom. See, they've been saying, walking around saying, with this stripes I am healed, with this stripes I am healed. And then a headache comes on them. And then what? What do they believe at that time? If they had some condition and they believe they receive healing, how long are you believing that you receive healing? Until the pain comes? How long do you believe that you receive? Until the doctor's report comes? When those kinds of things shake you, then you know, and if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, you don't know this word on a heart level. I don't care what subject, it, I mean, what the thing is about, whatever you're believing for. When you get into a panic, you're in unbelief. And while I'm on it, and I don't know how, how deep I'll get into this other part, but it's okay. While I'm on it, you, you need to understand something. People are trying to believe beyond their knowledge. Say that again, Pastor Holmes. Why, well, thank you. I believe I will. People are trying to believe beyond their knowledge. You can't believe beyond your knowledge of the word. Faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know that it's God's will for you to be healed, then you can't believe for healing. You can beg for healing, you can pray for healing, but you can't believe for it because you're uncertain about his will for you to be healed. But heart knowledge, when you and heart faith believes and stands on the word, no matter what is going on. If something comes against their body, if some pain comes against them, or some other attack comes against them, they are thrown, as we say, thrown for a loop. They don't know what to do. They don't understand their authority. They don't understand their rights. They don't understand how to exercise their authority. They don't understand what to do. They don't speak to the matter. They don't speak to their body. They don't speak if there's a devil causing it. They don't speak to that thing and make it go from them. They just lay around like victims and take whatever comes. But heart knowledge has a deep-seated peace associated with it. 
It is not moved by contradictory circumstances. It remains steadfast no matter what's going on. Fully persuaded that God's word must come to pass no matter how long it takes. Heart knowledge produces heart faith. Did you hear that? Heart knowledge produces heart faith. It does. And heart faith is unshakable. Oh Lord, I said it's unshakable. If, when you're believing from your heart, and I just told you right now, some of y'all just learned that you were not that your faith is on an intellectual level. When you get shaken because of the circumstance, you're in trouble. I've seen people try to believe, try to believe God. It doesn't work because you don't, you're not trying to believe. We're supposed to believe. Even in finances, I'll switch, switch back to that for just a second. People know that they got bills coming or something, rent due or mortgage and all, whatever the case is. They pray and say, I, be, I believe God. I got to have it by X, Y, on by such and so date. And I tell people, don't do that. Don't try to put a date on it because you're going to do fine right up until that date. And, and if, and if, you know, midnight come, you know that day has passed. And that's where a lot of people lose it. I, I heard a minister teaching along these lines years ago. And he said he and his wife would believe in God for, for this car. And they prayed and they agreed together they're going to get this car. And they prayed and they said we're going to get it. Let's say we're going to have it by Monday or by Friday, whatever the time they was it they said they're gonna have it by. And they got up that morning, I mean all the every day up to that, and they were saying, Yeah, we going we got it. But then they got up to that day, and you know what happens? People start worrying because they don't see where it's coming from. They can't see it. They usually call, start calling everybody, can I borrow this? Can I have that? You, you're not in faith. You're not in faith. When you listen, listen, listen. The Holy Ghost just dropped this on me. The Bible said, Cursed be the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. Some of you watching me, I love how the Lord does that. He just switched it over. Because he know who's watching and he know what you need to hear. I love when he does that. Now, now with that that couple I was talking about when they got up to when when it didn't work out for them, uh, uh, the man of God said he said he went to the Lord. He said, "Lord, I don't know what happened?" He said, "The Lord spoke to him. And said you did well, right up to midnight, and then everything crashed." Because your faith was in the time. Not in the word. So usually what happens when, if you say, I'm going to have it. I know in the name of you, I'm going to have it by, let's say, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Well, what's happening at 12? What's happening at 1230? Are you beginning to get anxious? Are you, are you beginning to be concerned? Are you just saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of you, oh Lord, I'm believing you, Lord, I'm believing you, Lord. Listen, you don't need to say to the Lord, I'm believing you, I'm believing you. First of all, he knows if you're believing him, and you're not going to persuade him that you're believing him by saying, Lord, I'm believing you, I'm believing you. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, that just helps somebody. Amen. Now listen, let me tell you how heart faith, how you can get it. Heart faith, 
heart level knowledge comes by hearing and consistent meditation of God's word. You can't just hear it. You got to say it. You got to meditate in it. Remember when the scripture said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. That word meditate means to mutter. You need to be saying it over and over and over. You can actually school yourself in the faith by saying it. You remember what Jesus said? Of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever your heart gets full of, that's what's going to start coming out of your mouth. When your heart's full of it, then you'll be speaking it. When you're speaking doubt, it's because your heart is full of doubt. When you speak in worry, it's because your heart's full of worry. When you speak, oh, it don't look like it's working, that's because your heart is full of worry or doubt or unbelief, concern. What are you looking at to determine that it's not working? I remember years ago praying with somebody and, or talking to, and talking to them, trying to teach them like this. Uh, and they said, well, it's not working. And I told, I asked, well, who told you it's not working? What makes you think it's not working? The only way you think it's not working is that you're looking at something. You've taken your eyes off of the Word of God. I guess we're going to have to change the title or to think the Lord taught me about healing. Or something, or or the thing the Lord spoke to me about receiving healing, because now now the Lord's taking me into this. You need to understand what the Word says, and you need to believe it. The simplest definition of faith I've ever heard is faith is believing that God told the truth. You need to understand, God cannot lie. Do you believe this here? Do you believe this Bible? Do you believe this is the Word of God? The inerrant Word of God. There's no errors in it. There's no failure in it. This is what God gave us. The, B, the Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what we have right here. Do you believe it? Do you believe what he said? Do you believe him to meet your need? Do you? Why are you worried about it? Now let me go back to something uh, because, because he's dealing with me here about it. Listen carefully. Somebody asked me many years ago in a, in a Bible study we were having it in our church. I started taking questions and somebody raised their hand and asked me, uh, can we bite off more than we can chew? And I said, well, it depends on what you mean by that. You can bite off more than you are able to believe for. You can bite off more than you're able to believe for. You can try to believe God for this and that. You know, and, and uh, that's all you're going to wind up doing, trying to believe him. I'm God, God, I prayed over my business. God's going to give me millions of dollars. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you were able to believe God for a thousand dollars? When was the last time Let's, let's, let's don't even go that high. When was the last time you were able to believe God for $100 above your paycheck, your salary? If, if, if you get, let's say you, you make $500 a week. When was the last time you were able to believe God for an extra $100? without knowing where it's coming from. 
Listen, if you can't jump two feet off the ground, you can't jump 10 feet off. Let me use another analogy. If you go to the gym to start working out, you say, I've never worked. You, you say, well, I've never worked out. I'm going to go to the gym and start working out, building my muscles and, you know, developing all of that. You know how muscles are developed? By resistance. That's how, it's, that's how it happens. Those muscles are experiencing resistance from the weight. That's how, that's how, and that's how your faith is developed, by resistance. If you haven't believed God for a thousand dollars, how are you going to believe him for a million? If you haven't believed God for a, a, to be healed of a headache, how in the world are you going to believe to be healed of cancer? I'm talking to somebody. If you can't believe God, like I said, if you can't jump two feet, you can't jump ten. If you, when you go in the gym, you don't say the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a hundred pounds and start lifting, or three hundred pounds. You gotta develop. You gotta work your way up to that. You might start off with ten pounds. You might have a five pound barbell in in in, in both hands. And working with that. After a while, that becomes a little easy for you. Now you can move up 10 pounds. That after a while, that's going to come easy because your, your muscles get developed. And it can handle that. And it becomes easy. Then you move up further. Well, it's the same way. That's the way faith works. Believe God for something. Start off with something you can handle. Believe God. I mean, I just used a hundred dollars. How many of you can believe God? How many of you have ever believed God for ten dollars more than you'll pay? I'm not talking about by you borrowing it and going asking for somebody for something. If you're going to borrow money, that's not God meeting your need. Oh, say that again, Pastor Holmes. Well, I think you believe I will. If you're going to borrow money, that's not God meeting your need. Because you gotta, you gotta pay that back. Some people have certain people who have been a blessing to them. At some point, as soon as they get in a jam, who are they calling? The ones that was a blessing to them. And they'll say, I don't believe in God. Really? Well, why you, why you keep calling Uncle George? Aunt Mary, why you keep calling your sister? Because she make more money than you. Why you keep calling your brother? Because he has he, he makes more money than you. Is that is that believing God? What some people call believing God, what they're believing for is for God to speak to the heart of somebody when when they ask for money. Oh Lord, let them say yes. You know I need God. You know what? And people are very good at spending other people's money. Sizing other people up on the basis of what they have, what they drive, and of what they live, where they live. How do you know people have money based on what they do? Those people could be choking, financially choking to death. But they, they look good. You don't know if they're struggling. You don't know if they're selling stuff. I'm not talking about some illegal stuff. You don't know what they're doing. They could be selling furniture on somewhere or pawning stuff. You don't know what, just to pay their bill. And you looking at them talking about, oh, I know they have money. You don't know what anybody has. You know what you have. There's a difference between you believing God and leaning on somebody that you think can help you. Oh, that's too rich not to say again. There is a difference between you believing God to meet your need than you leaning on somebody that you think can help you. 
Amen. Now, you, you, uh, I'm going to close in a few minutes, but listen. You ever had a headache? You ever have pain come in your body? And so, what do you do? What's the first thing you do? Reach for the Tylenol or the, what, you know, something like that? What do you do? Immediately reach for the painkiller? The pain pills or what have you? When have you ever stood against it? And said, I come against this thing in the mighty name of Jesus. When have you ever said, I command this pain to leave my body right now in the name of Jesus? When have you said to your body, body, I command you. Now Jesus said you can say to the mountain. If you can speak to the mountain, why can't you speak to your body? Why can't you say to your body, I command you to line up with the word of God, which says that Jesus himself took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses, all of them. Therefore, I resist, reject, renounce, and stand against all sickness, all disease, all pain, and every other symptom associated with pain or with, with sickness or disease in the name of Jesus. I stand on my right, for it is a God-given right, and I stand on it, and I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. Now, how many times you've done that and just stand there knowing, listen, knowing that it has to leave. Not waiting to see if it will leave. Knowing that it has to leave. Going on about your business. I told somebody a long time ago, I said, let me, I was teaching in church and I, many, many years ago. I said, let me tell you what faith is. Let me give you an example of believing God. Your little child is crying out and you go and check, check on them. They have a fever and, or what have you in there. You pray with them and when you leave the room, you close the door behind you and you go out and you don't go back in there. Now, see, some people say, what? That's right. Because when you go back to check, what are you checking for? What are you going back to check? And I made that mistake uh, with, with one of my children, one of my daughters, when she was two years old, had, had all these, uh, she was burning with fever. I, you know, well, I prayed for her. So I first of all, started to run cold water and tell her, a two-year-old baby. And, and uh, you know, I was copying what, I saw my, what my mother did to me when I was a child. She put me in the tub and ran cold water and, and to kind of get my body temperature down. And so that's what I thought about. And after a while, everything, she cooled down. I prayed for her. Everything seemed right. But I made the mistake. I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. This was many years ago. Probably 40 years ago or something like that. But anyway, 40 years ago. Anyway, so I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this child in, in bed with me tonight. I didn't realize it at the time. You see, I learned things like everybody else. Have. You have to learn. I, this is when I, I learned something. What did I learn? I didn't learn it that day. It was, it was a little while later because I put her in the bed with me. And uh, that morning, the next morning I woke up, she was burning with fever, burning with fever again. And she was burning with fever so bad. And uh, her fever was so high, she started going into convulsions. Thank God I knew 
what to do. The hospital, if I can get in the car and drive off, it's about a 20 minute ride. You said, what did you do? I said, I recognize this is the devil trying to kill my baby, but he ain't gonna kill her today. I said, you foul devil in the name of Jesus. Least come out of her, leave her alone. in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name in Jesus' name. I just kept going. I hit the devil left and right. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name. Of, I just hit her one way and then another. Hit him one way and then another. Until finally, well, I did that for a few minutes, and she passed out like she was really loud. I thought she was dead for a minute. And I called her name and she said, huh? And just like that, she was delivered. That thing left her, the fever left. Everything was straight and it's been that way ever since then up until now. Praise God. Never had anything like that again. But it was the enemy. And sometimes it is a devil doing something. Well, come against it. Don't let the devil just abuse you or abuse your child. Exercise your authority over him. Praise God. Amen. And by the way, I've already decided because this was going to be the last month, but I already decided I'm going another month. So I know I'm going all of January as well teaching Praise God. And so on, and next week, I'll, I'll actually get to divine healing. It's a spiritual reality. But I was impressed in my spirit of the Lord to, to share this. I just found this note uh, a couple of days ago uh, in, my, in my looking in my notebooks and so forth. And when I did, the Lord impressed upon me, share that. And I already knew I wanted to talk about divine healing and spiritual reality. But then the Lord dealt with me about sharing this. And then actually when I was praying, when we first started, I, w I was just listening because I was looking at this before. And I said, I don't know if I'm going to, maybe I'll wait and look into that later or share that later. But the Lord impressed upon me and actually spoke to me. He said, share it. So this is the way he wanted me to go. Did you get something out of that? Did the Lord bless you? Did you learn something about believing God and receiving from God? Get yourself to a place where you believe and you are fully persuaded. Like Abraham, he considered not his own body, now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. When you hear giving glory to God, that means praising God. The Bible says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. Giving glory to God, listen, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. He didn't keep checking with his body and asking his body, is it true? And that's what a lot of people do. They pray and then they keep checking themselves to see if it worked. Some people get so conditioned to having certain things come against them, they start expecting it. They, keep, they start expecting the migraines. They expect it. They think about it. And they don't think to say because they don't understand their authority. They don't think to say, I'm not having that. That's not coming on me. That's a lie. They don't think the first sign of some kind of discomfort. They don't think to say, oh no, oh no, that's not for me. Jesus himself took my infirmity and bare my sicknesses. You go from me right now in the name of Jesus. You go from me right now. I'm not going to have that. Praise God. That's what you need to do. Learn how to do it. Learn how to believe. Learn how to stand. So let me pray with you and then we're going we're gonna to close now. And I want to pray with you and pray for you. 
If you have something wrong in your body, a pain or discomfort or something, put your hand on your body. If you can't reach where the pain is, it's okay, just put your hand anywhere on your body. And we're going to pray. Now, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for your holy word. Thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost. I know that you minister to people both about healing and even about finances and about receiving answers to prayer. I thank you for it. And now, Lord, there are those who are watching and listening who are in need of healing. And I thank you for the privilege and honor to pray with them and join my faith with theirs and expect something to happen. Also, I thank you for the opportunity to exercise my authority over the devil. I speak right now to every sickness, every disease, every pain, every discomfort that is uh, associated with any sickness or disease that is represented from in the bodies of people that's watching me now. I command it to go. Pain, you go. And I come against every foul devil, one clean spirit, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. I command you to loose that man, loose that woman, loose that child right now in Jesus' holy name. Now lift your both hands and give him thanks. Say, Lord, I thank you I'm free. I believe that I receive. I believe I receive. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how things feel. I am moved only by what I believe. And I believe God that it is and it shall be even as he said in his holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, God bless you. Tune in again next week. And uh, we'll, we'll follow the Lord however he does, says go. But I'm planning to talk about divine healing as a spiritual reality. Amen. So God bless you. See you next time. In Jesus' name. Amen.